Okay, Gerardo, I took a look at your paper. Uh -huh. And a couple of comments. Uh, generally, uh, it's good. Um, I see you're making a distinction between the, re the results and the discussion. The only thing I would, uh, that I noticed at times, you talk a little bit more about John than um, yeah. Jane. Like sometimes I feel like one there's a couple of paragraphs where you talk almost all about John and then you throw in maybe just one uh, direct quote from Jane mm -hmm. without maybe an observation or some other data source to include that. So two things: one, you can either uh, try to maintain a balance, so either cut back in that one particular paragraph that one thing that you're talking about if you want to compare John and Jane. Either cut back some of the evidence for John and add more with Jane within the same paragraph, because I think the examples that I saw, it looked like you were trying to include both John and Jane within one paragraph of evidence. Mm -hmm. Or the second option is to divide up Super. the paragraph. So maybe one paragraph is evidence of John, second paragraph evidence with Jane, and then one analyzed paragraph where you talk about those two. two. So. Remember the options that I gave you. One was one paragraph evidence, one paragraph analyze. But there's nothing wrong with putting two paragraphs in this case if you're comparing two different participants, mm -hmm. two separate paragraphs as, as evidence, and then a good discussion, not necessarily long, but you know, a substantive uh, uh, discussion paragraph that talks about the two paragraphs mm -hmm. that we just talked about. So that's another option if you feel that you need to you know, now with the word count, you need to look at the word count because you're pretty close to the word count. So you're probably going to have to cut and add or do something because you've got pretty much the word count. So mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you can just be a little bit more precise or concise with John with the evidence of John and talk a little bit more about Jane. Or you know, if if it's not, you know, if if there's really not much more to say about Jane, if it's pretty much the same, then just mention. You know, something like Jane is, you know, pretty much the same as you know. If there's nothing more there to add, yeah. You know, but yeah, you know, that's the problem because I have more information from John than Jane. Okay. So that's why I put more about. Okay. Well, try to yeah find what you know. Uh, yeah, I. We need to try to maintain a balance. balance there, and I don't want, you know, if you have less information about Jane, try to find that information that, you know, that you do have about Jane, and figure out how you want to present that in a in a balanced way. Mm -hmm. You know, so that the bottom line is, you know, whenever, you know, it, it doesn't help your case to talk a whole bunch about John and a little bit about Jane because that. That even they might ask questions like, well, okay, well, did you observe Jane's class? Because I see that you have a direct quote here, or how does this differ, or is it similar to John? You know, and so you want to try to think about those possible questions, mm -hmm. right? And whenever you're developing this and as well preparing for your oral defense, prepare for questions. Think about, try to anticipate questions that they may ask you. And a lot of it could depend on how you're presenting here, because the way you present here, it could also be the way you present in your uh, oral defense also. So, yeah. you know, the same thing we're talking about here is you want to try to maintain some sort of balance. Now, you're not going to be able to talk about everything that you have here in your, in your oral presentation, but the same rule applies. So whatever you choose to talk about, mm -hmm. two or three data sources balanced between results and discussion, and in this case, between participants, and you know, and you know, if you just, you might describe at some point some limitations in the method section. You had a few limitations if you had you know, just a lot less information or data from one participant than the other. But still, whenever you want to present, you know, when you present here, you want to try to maintain that balance. So it wasn't every paragraph, but I, I noted here in certain paragraphs where. I felt like uh, you just kind of included a little bit of information about Jane, and then you know, I was like, well, maybe you know, what 
if we can add more information and yeah. yeah. Uh, when you say you have less information, do you have less data sources or just less information? Yes, from less state? information. For example, the dictionary uses strategy. I didn't found mm. that. I didn't find that on Jane's classes. So that's ah, okay. why I only added John. Okay. Well, that, that's that's um, that's okay. That's less of a problem. My my concern more is about when you have some information about Jane mm -hmm. that it's a little bit that you have more that you. Present yeah. a balance. So if you don't have any information, then don't include it. Just say either just include it here, and if they ask, say, "Well, I didn't get any information. They didn't use that technique." And maybe you mention one one sentence: Jane did not use this dictionary. She didn't use the dictionary during the time I mm -hmm. collected the data. Something like that. Now another question I had was: Okay, tracking. I was. I don't know if I got my head around. Uh, Tracking. Uh, what is tracking? It is just basically repeat after a recording or a video. So you the can students have or the teacher the or students. both the students. Yeah. So like, work, do they have like a script that they read or they just listen? And they repeat? listen and repeat. Okay, so do do they pay, play like an excerpt, a certain amount of like one line of something, and yeah. then they repeat? And then another line, repeat. Okay, repeat. Okay. Do you define this technique some in the literature review at some point? Yes. Okay. And tracking is an iterative and most. Whatever the speaker says, either on video or face to face, immediately after on a word by word basis. Okay. All right. Now, So this is a non-intervention strategy. Uh, are we using non-intervention throughout your paper? Is that the deal? Yes. I mean, um, in your research questions, does it say non-intervention? Mm -hmm. Because I, because I, I guess when I think intervention, non-intervention, like inter a non-intervention strategy would be where the teacher doesn't do anything. Well, here is like in pronunciation, non-intervention is that the teacher doesn't explain the sounds. The teacher doesn't think anything. Ah, okay. The students just could that be implicit? Said, yeah. I wonder if we should use implicit, explicit instead of non-intervention. Uh, yeah. Because like intervention for me is more like yeah I mean I see what you mean but, but like intervention like this the teacher doesn't intervene doesn't do mm -hmm. anything it's just like they just let the students uh, because even the the teachers like pausing the audio right I mean so yeah. the teachers kind of intervening dictionary use the teacher still saying something like I mean they're saying get out the dictionary right or something they're saying Look up the yeah, they have to encourage the dictionary use in order to. Uh huh. And they say, what for the dictionary use? What does the teacher say to? Because that was another non-intervention strategy, no? Yeah. So. Uh, So what does the teacher say to the students? What do the teacher? What do the students do with dictionary? And they use well. For example, from my research, uh -huh. the teacher didn't say anything about dictionaries. Yeah. Students use them by themselves. So they look for the word and they get the pronunciation. So then I ask John, who's the one, is, and he says it's because the students have already a background about the language. 
Okay, so so the students are just using dictionaries on their own. It's like you yeah. just arrive and whatever activity they're doing, if they use the dictionary, that's okay. So what kind of activity were they doing? Uh, they were doing a speaking activity where they had to describe what they were wearing. Okay, and did you ask the teacher if in a prior class were there instructions like telling the students to bring dictionaries to class? I asked ask him if, if there's like encouragement from to use a dictionary. He said yes. Okay, but not when you observed? No. Okay. You, maybe you ought to, I think that's important information that you should include at some point in the results that that to make that clear. Yeah. At least when I was reading, I did they find out something? Why students? Let's see. The reason became useful to every unit. The engineer I found that some students, the SE teacher, they use the dictionary. Okay. I would I would introduce this section about and include that that information just to kind of set the the stage because at mm -hmm. least my mind frame when I was reading this when I was reading it for some reason I just I felt like the teacher was going to tell them you know and since this is if you want to call it non intervention or implicit whatever if you say this first say at the, the, during the interview the teacher encouraged the, the students to use a dictionary but during the data collection period uh, the teacher did not uh, encourage, didn't mention the use of the dictionary. Just to, to say, okay, the students in the, during the time that I observed used the dictionary use on mm -hmm. their own. Just to kind of put that into context. Yeah. And then you can uh, continue on here. So I'm just going to put a note here about um, uh, include include data and I whatever Jane you know information you have about Jane if she did the same or oh she didn't use a dictionary though okay so. did you ask her though if she encourages using the dictionary like like what John did at the beginning of class or beginning of the semester saying use a dictionary yes and she said yes, but they didn't use any dictionary. Okay, but dictionary. you can, but still plant. Uh, say this, say that. Say John and Jane both mentioned in their interviews that they, you know, Inquire. encouraged it. And then in the case of Jane, Jane did not. Her students never used uh, a dictionary, a dictionary mm -hmm. during the time that I collected it. So include data regarding teachers' prior instructions to students regarding dictionary use. Okay. okay. And I found that. Um, I all right. I, if you want to leave non-intervention, um, I think I like very explicit. Maybe implicit. Yeah, kind of uh, just to, just. Just so they don't think intervention. Well, the teacher's intervening, so yeah. it's more like implicit. Just and make sure you check kind of your yeah. whole paper. I, mean, I don't think it'll mean a lot of changes, but double check the research question. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and you've got a good solid uh, base here. It's it's the write-up's good here. Um, uh, so Spelling now. Spelling uses spelling. Now, occasionally, this is small change here, but I think this will help clear be a little bit clearer. You have a topic sentence here, mm -hmm. which is good, and then this particular strategy is used by both teachers who are pronouncing it, and and so you almost. I look at this kind of as a discussion and then an evidence. And what I'm suggesting here is the second sentence, evidence. And then, you know, later 
if this is, sentence is even necessary, fine, but, but, but present the evidence first. Um, so that can be the linking sentence. Uh, it could be the linking sentence, linking sentence at the end of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, this particular strategy, yeah, and maybe just add a little bit to to mention the next. Yeah, this is kind of a summary, but maybe another clause or a sentence or or, or yeah, clause here that links to the next paragraph. But yeah. This might work better at the end. No, and in fact, in fact, you do need a, a linking sentence, and I didn't mention this here. Yeah, you do need to add a linking sentence. Okay. Now, a couple of times that you do this, uh, this is common actually, but. When you say so, students can notice how each. Just say so, students notice how, and it just it makes it sound a lot better. Yeah. A lot of times, when you see a modal, when you feel like you need to use a modal, remove the modal and see how it sounds, and see if that, because it just makes it sound like the students notice this more assertive, where they can they can notice they can notice. Uh, it just kind of weakens. The, the, sentence. the sentence, the idea. And I, I, I brought this up a couple of times, but I want you to really care, be careful, like here. And I want it so that they can, well, okay, so they can correct themselves, that's okay. Uh, but just sometimes just kind of remove it and see, does it sound a little bit more assertive? Do mm -hmm. it sound more assertive if I remove it? If it does, then try to remove it. Yeah, okay, that's basically it. Yeah. Now there's here we talk about tracking. You mentioned up here the prior paragraph like how often they use tracking. Yeah. And it sounds like you're suggesting that they should use it more. And that's your discussion here. But then you have a citation who argues that only that only with constant practice learners can develop develop the ability to attend do you have any experts that say like how often they should use it no they use it continuously during class of, of practice okay so Or they don't. They're not really more specific. They just say just constantly use it yeah. type of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fine. Then if if you can't if you don't have it, fine. Leave it the way it is. But I just mentioned uh, here if you can find an expert that can be a little bit more specific than just saying oh you should always use it, uh, it would be better. But you know if if you don't have it, uh, because they may ask. You know they say okay, give us a suggestion. How how often should they use it? And I, I don't know if your best answer is, well, the experts just say you should always use it. So if you can just put that, kind of think about that. So that mm -hmm. could be a pot potential question. If you can find an author somewhere that provides a little bit more concrete example about how often, that would help prepare you to answer that because I just think that this might be a, a question that they may ask you. Like, okay, well, what do you think? Make a... What is your recommendation? They don't use it enough. What? How would you do it? Right? And so, mm -hmm. whether or not you can find, uh, you know, evidence or not, prepare yourself for that type of answer. And and I would prepare even in within the presentation, depending on time and how much you're going to talk about it. Um, you know, make some suggestions. Like, what do you suggest? How often? Or how? Or when? Or whom, what type of students could uh, this technique tracking be used? And really, the same is going to apply to all of the techniques that you're presenting here. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is what you observe. Now, what do you, okay, okay, Venus, what do you suggest? And so, you've got several techniques here. So, one of your challenges during the presentation is going to be allowing enough time 
to talk right. about the police department. I see evidence and then your discussion, your opinion. Mm -hmm. but, um, just just if something to keep in mind there. Now the spelling, 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 spelling. Okay. Spelling. So Yeah, double check all of your paragraphs uh, for linking sentences, mm -hmm. um, or at least a summary. I say linking sentence because the preference would be to, to link one idea to the next, but at least a summary mm -hmm. at the end. Now, um, spelling. So they they have the students spell the word. The teacher spells the word. The teacher spells the word. So here, like, they're spelling. See? Yeah, the example? Yeah. Yes. All right, in this example, I would do it like this. So I would write it out like. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, usually when you notate someone spelling a word is like this with hyphens. Okay. But I notice here you're lumping them. So are they, is he saying S C R E A M? I see. Or is he saying S C R E A M? A -A. I see. Yeah. Pauses by the cadena. Or is he saying S C R E? No, it's because I didn't. Know how to. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I, then I would write it like this. See? Mm -hmm. And now, so how does this lend to pronunciation? Spelling? It's like the teacher, for example, a student asked, well, that case was, the student was, how do you say guitar? And the teacher was like, you say it's scream. So it's S C R E A M, scream. And then the student was, okay, scream. Yes. Um, so then they say scream, and then the, does the teacher then say scream? Do they use like repetition? Because you have, repet do you still talk about drilling really? or drilling? Yeah. Where they the teacher says like scream, and they say scream. I see you back and forth. So is drilling embedded part of this, or is it just, or is it just they say? Scream? Well, it depends on the student. Because if the student okay. repeats the word, then the teacher will repeat the word. All right, so. Teaching will be spelling, can be improving. Okay, then you talk about Nesson's charts. Yeah, I found similarities. Okay. <coughs> okay, in Nesson's charts, um, what are similarities? What are some of the similarities with Nesson's chart and what you observed? Uh, Mesum chart, like each sound has a different color. So, in order to form the word, they use different colors. And then in the spelling, well, the teacher is like giving each sound of each letter and then the word. Okay, so instead of the color, it's the sound, but it's yeah. the same. Yeah, instead of color, it's sounds. Okay. Maybe maybe say say that instead of using Some colors, colors, use sounds to see the after you talk about it here to make it very obvious, very clear. Mm -hmm. Even though you talk about talk about Messon's chart prior, you don't have to go into elaborate detail again, yeah. but tie it in, make it very simple. So instead of using colors, they're similar in this way. I see it needs to be very, very specific. If the teacher's using drilling, even if it happens once, 
maybe bring in that also. A mixture of these strategies. Mm -hmm. Spelling versus and, and drilling, depending on the student, just as you told me. You know, try to maybe uh, talk a little bit more about that in, in the spelling in the spelling section. Because I got a little sidetracked with the spelling, like it didn't I didn't I wasn't able to connect the dots with like I was with, with the other section. So um, All right, um, and just a quick comment about the chart. I would include here uh, the coding. I would all of your labels should be a level two. Oh. So appendix B would be a level one. Then all of your headings, your for your appendix, a level, level two. two. And I would call this just a coding chart. Mm -hmm. And and then I would remove all the the bold except for the headings. So these would be in bold, and then all these just normal. Mm -hmm. Exactly how you have it, but just uh, And I would put upper and lower case for code. Oh. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah. Right. The printed version, we have to handle it during the mock, or? No, I need it by the 22nd, okay. this Thursday, before 2 o'clock. So we have to bring you printed. Yes, please. One copy. Yeah. And it can be, uh, I'd like for it to be bound, or one of those cheap plastic yeah. things, whatever. It doesn't have to be like super nice, but just to, that's all together, not loose, because we're going to be passing around to all the tutors. Mm -hmm. And we need to add table of contents. Yeah, I guess we haven't talked about the table of contents. <laughs> Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it for this Thursday. I mean, if you have it, fine. Um, yeah, I'll try to do a video on that as well. I haven't really talked at all about the table contents. Um, if you can include one for Thursday, fine. If not, it's fine. Okay. Um, for the final, yeah, I would try to. Have yeah, and the mock. I have to attend two. two. Yes, you can. Uh, for your, we have a reflection due. We don't have a reflection due this week, but starting in the mocks at the end of the second week, there's a big reflection. That's yeah. Like twelve points. So, um, in the reflection in Canvas, I include what you need to include. But basically, it's information about your own feedback that you receive, your own reflection about your own performance, and feedback from two uh, two other classmates. Now, the the classmates can be the classmates that you are scheduled with for that day, or you can observe whomever you want. You can observe more than two, but for the reflection, I only ask that you include uh, two. two in that. But it's important uh, that you yeah, choose. You can choose whomever you want, and so yeah. you decide who you want to uh, observe. Them. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Mm -hmm. And you can you'll have until the second week. I would recommend doing it right away after you uh, complete your own. Uh, presentation as well as your observation system while it's fresh, but you will have until the second week mm -hmm. to complete that uh, reflection. Okay. And there won't be any more tutoring sessions. So I guess this will be the last one. The last one. Unless, obviously, you want to schedule time with me, we need to discuss something, but we won't have real technically uh, tutoring sessions scheduled. Okay. Um, start, yeah, basically like this week. And today, because of all the activities uh, this week. I'm not going to be taking attendance, so I will be taking attendance for the mock presentations, basically that you present. Mm -hmm. That'll be your attendance, um, and that you observe other t two other uh, classmates. But yeah, that'll be it can be any classmate, like any for example from Carla. So 
Uh, any, yeah, any of your classmates that are presenting in the mark. So mm -hmm. I would choose, you know, yeah, yeah. Use your own discretion there and choose whomever you want. And um, what else? Do you have any other questions? Now I'm going to be kind of in and out. I, there, the, the some semana de la carrera is yeah. this week, so I'm maybe trying to go there. So I mean, if you have. I'll be, you know, I'll, you can give me whatever you have there if we see each other, or I'll be, I'll be coming back here. So I'm going to be coming back here during my planned tutoring sessions, just for those who want to have their tutoring session. So mm -hmm. uh, even though it's not really technically required this week because of everything, uh, I am going to be meeting anyone, you know, any of you who need to, uh, who want to meet. So. Um, yeah, try to, to find me either there or here, and um, the worst case scenario is just leave it with Claudia. Yeah. I mean, if I'm not here and you have to leave as before, you know, 2 o'clock, leave with it with Claudia, Claudia if, if you can't find me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. But it's very important that you have, have it finished before 2 o'clock on Thursday. If you have it like on Wednesday, fine, or Tuesday, if you have I, it before, I'm planning fine. to finish on Wednesday. But, yeah, but please... Two o'clock because after two o'clock the three of us are meeting and yeah. scheduling everything. So. so after we, then that person can be corrected again. Yeah. So basically, when you turn it in on the twenty second, right, we'll be in contact like always. But um, during the mock presentation is when we'll pass around mm -hmm. that final version to the other tutors, which they will give you comments uh, about both your presentation as well as your written thesis. They and then I print notes. that again three times. And then you and then from that point, when are you presenting your mock presentation? What date? June second. June second, that's the first or second week? Second week. Second week, okay. So basically is that Tuesday? What day is it? Monday. Monday, okay. So you'll have until from Monday you'll receive back your feedback from the other tutors. Mm -hmm. And you'll essentially have one week. One week, right. You'll have one week to make final changes. So, um, you know, I, I suspect that the changes from the other tutors will be minimal, I suspect, in most cases. Uh, and, you know, if the way we're, we've been working, I, I think that you're very close, you know. So I think any change that you have at that point, they should be minimal. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be a, a major changes. So um, you should have time to make those final changes and then print you know the the good version, three three versions, three printed versions, as well as the disk with the the Microsoft Word document. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we need a PDF document or use the Microsoft Word? Microsoft Word, it's fine. I mean, if you, yeah, it's fine because if we need a PDF, we can easily convert it. But yeah. Make sure it is Word so that we can edit. We can edit it. You know. mm -hmm. um, what else? Mm, I guess that's it. Do you have yeah. any other no, that's it. questions? But so far, I think that's yeah, I think you're 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 close here. We're just kind of, I think we can tighten it up, make it a little bit more concise. Um, I think this, uh, you know, you've got a good basis for the results. In general, you've got a good balance between the results, okay, mm -hmm. and the discussion, but. Looking more specific at the results, I think we can tighten that up a little bit and make it more coherent by having a good balance between those two uh, participants. And you decide if you really, there are going to be points, I think, there are going to be times where there maybe were some differences that you want to discuss. Maybe there are times where basically it was the same. So if there were some similarities, there's no need to really go into elaborate detail there. You just mentioned Jane basically That's said the same, did the same. And move on to something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, Gerardo. Well, we'll yeah. be. Uh, I'll be in touch here, and yes. uh, then I'll be looking for your paper here this week, and we'll we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome, Sailor. You too. Yeah.